In this video, I'm going to show you how to automatically get pre-foreclosure leads using web scraping, all for free. We'll find pre-foreclosures in your county, analyze the web page, use ChatGPT to help us build some base code, run that code, and get our data into a spreadsheet. This will help you stay ahead of the competition with the most up-to-date data so you can start contacting motivated leads right away. And even if you've never coded before, don't worry. I'll break down everything step by step. Let's get started. First off, why should we care about pre-foreclosures? Pre-foreclosures are properties where homeowners have missed mortgage payments, but the bank hasn't foreclosed on the property yet. This means the homeowners are in a tight spot. They need a solution quickly, making them highly motivated sellers. For investors, this is a gold mine, especially if you're interested in creative financing strategies like Subject2. If you're new to leads and want to learn more about different types, check out my previous video, New Leads List, where I cover on-market and off-market leads and what makes leads more motivated than others. In this case, pre-foreclosures is at the top of off-market leads because it is time-bound. So how do we actually find these leads? I live in Tampa, Florida, so I'll use my county as an example, the exercise that we're going to walk through, and you'll be able to do the same for your area. Simply start by going to Google and search for your county foreclosure auction calendar. Usually one of the top search results will be the official county website that lists all the pre-foreclosures or upcoming auctions. For me, that's Hillsborough County, Florida auction calendar. On their website, there's different options like registering to bid on properties. But for our use case, we're going to be interested in accessing the auction calendar, which is publicly available. This is where we'll find properties that are going into auction that we want to scrape. Once we're on the auction calendar page, we'll see the current month by default. For me, that's October 2024. You'll notice a calendar with dates, and some dates have numbers indicating how many properties are scheduled for auction on that day. Auctions typically don't occur on weekends, so focus on weekdays. By clicking on a specific date, you can see details like the parcel ID, case number, property address, and the final judgment amount. Sometimes properties may have their addresses hidden for privacy reasons. You'll also notice some auctions are marked as canceled. This happens when owners resolve their debts or when deals like subject to financing come into play. And now the property is no longer going into auction. For our purposes, we're interested in the subset of properties that are listed as auction waiting. These are the leads that we can target. Why are we doing web scraping? Well, manually copying this information into a spreadsheet would be incredibly time consuming, especially if we're looking at multiple dates or counties. What we want to do is automate this process for three reasons. Save time, ensure data accuracy, and stay ahead of the competition. We're going to start by harnessing the power of ChatGPT to help us build a web scraper. ChatGPT is a fantastic resource for brainstorming, writing text, and yes, even generating code. It can help us get to a solid starting point for our script, which we can then modify as we need. However, to get the best results, we need to provide ChatGPT with enough context. We can't just say, scrape this entire page. No, we need to tell it the data that we want, where to find it, and any specific requirements. To prepare our ChatGPT prompt, we'll first inspect the web page that we want to extract data for to understand its structure. For any web page on the internet, you can right click and select inspect. This will allow you to view HTML elements. This opens up the developer tools in your browser. You can locate the specific data that you want. For example, I'm hovering now over parcel ID and we can see by hovering over the HTML elements, it matches the parcel ID that we see within the web page. You can copy the relevant HTML structure by right-clicking on the element and selecting copy element. What I'm going to do here is actually copy the entire HTML structure starting all the way at the top, right-click, and I'm going to save it into a text file, or you could save it to an HTML file on your computer as well. So the HTML file is going to help ChatGPT get a landscape of what is available to scrape. 
but it's not going to know instinctively what we want to scrape, right? So I'm going to take a screenshot of the page. This way I can highlight the exact data points we want to extract. I've used Preview App on Mac to highlight in red the exact data points that we want. For example, auction date as well as property address. I've done this for free using the Preview App. You can do so as well using Canva or even Microsoft Paint. This image will help ChatGPT understand exactly what data within the HTML structure we are after. And if you're brand new to programming and don't know what HTML is, it's basically the skeleton of what makes up each web page. Here is what it looks like when we actually reopen our file that we saved down. We can control F and search for parcel ID and see it within our structure. As well as we reopen it into an HTML file, we'll see all the CSS stripped out and it's just the text. So now that you have a bit of an understanding of what we're uploading, let's move on to put this into ChatGPT. In ChatGPT, we'll start by attaching the HTML or text file and the annotated screenshot. Then we'll provide a detailed prompt. Remember, we wanna act as if ChatGPT is like an intern. We need to give it a role, task, requirements, and anything else to reference. So here I'm going to put our role is act as a web scraping engineer, task, Build a Python script that scrapes the attached public web page to extract the data highlighted in the screenshot. Requirements. The script should be dynamic since some calendar dates may have more properties than others. Remember, we saw in the example, some dates for auction had one single property, others had seven. So we need our code to be dynamic to grab all of them. Assume the user is a beginner programmer. So that means provide clear steps and explanations of the code. And as a reference, we will include the original web page URL. By giving ChatGPT this information, it can generate a custom script tailored to our needs. Before we send the information off to ChatGPT, you may be thinking, why don't we just use software like PropStream to get the data? The problem with getting pre-foreclosure leads from data platforms like PropStream is that they may not update their records daily, meaning you're often working with stale information which can be perfectly fine if you have a large marketing budget and you're casting a really wide net, so you're looking nationwide. But if you're just starting out or you're focusing on a few niche markets with a limited budget, using outdated data can cause you to fall behind from the competition. When those homeowners are receiving text messages or mail to their property, you're going to be one of the last ones to reach them. So in those tighter markets, speed is everything. And acting on outdated leads means other investors may have already made offers or closed deals by the time you reach out. Okay, back to our code. We understand what we're looking to do. We're trying to get pre-foreclosures into a spreadsheet. We're going to use web scraping to do so, so it's automatic and it's timely. So let's send our three components to ChatGPT, the HTML structure, the image, and the prompt. Within seconds, ChatGPT provides us with starter code. It suggests using libraries like Beautiful Suit for parsing HTML and Pandas for handling data frames. It also breaks down the steps, making it easier for us to understand. This is a great base of code and one that we can work off to start and then modify as we go along. Remember to always start by completing small pieces of your project before tackling the entire problem. So as I work through this code, I realized that we need to interact with dynamic elements like calendars and buttons. So you'll see in our code that we actually add additional packages like Selenium, as well we use Firefox and headless mode for our web driver. This will allow us to simulate a real user interacting with the web page. Before we put it all together and dive into the code, I want to address a question I get very often. Is web scraping legal? The short answer in the US is yes. Web scraping is generally legal when you're accessing publicly available data, but there are some considerations, terms of service, ethical use, make sure that it's public. For example, we're using a government website here and I'm not providing any legal advice. So definitely consult with a legal professional if you're looking to resell this data. In our case, we're accessing publicly available information from a county government website to help identify potential investment opportunities and we're using it for ourselves. We're not reselling it. We're not bypassing any security measures or assessing private data. So we'll start by using Google Collab as our free notebook environment to run Python code. If you've never used it before, Google Collab is like an online Jupyter notebook 
where you can write and execute Python code. All you need is a Google account. Here's a quick recap of our steps. We're assessing the county auction calendar, navigating to the desired month, which in our use case, we're going to scrape for the forward month, which is November of 2024. Scrape the auction data for each date, then export this into a spreadsheet, which we could do future calculations on or even upload it into a CRM. If you're new to programming or you'd like the fundamentals of discovering motivated leads, join us for our alternative leads list mini series. We'll cover everything from web scraping, data aggregation, scoring, as well as skip tracing to help you discover motivated sellers using cutting edge technologies. The link is in the description below and it is hosted by myself, data specialist in real estate and by my automation specialist co-host, Noah. As we run our code, the first step is to install the necessary packages. In Google Collab, you can install packages directly within the notebook. We'll be installing Selenium for automating web browser interactions, as well as Gecko Driver to control Firefox. Then we import our libraries and configure the web driver to run in headless mode so we don't get a browser window popping up. This means the browser is running in the background. As well, we're going to run our functions. I'll detail what these functions are as we get down later in the code. We're going to start by testing our setup with a simple command to open Google and print the page title. This helps to ensure everything is working correctly. Once that's working, we can navigate to the auction calendar page. Next, we want to automate clicking on the next month button to move from October to November. Remember, we're simulating our actions as if we were on the real auction calendar webpage. By default, the page shows the current month, which is October of 2024. We need to create an action to move to the next calendar month, which is November. This action is essentially a click event. This ran successfully. Now that we're on the November calendar, we want to get all the auction dates available since not every day we'll have an auction. Here's how we're going to do it. We're going to inspect the calendar structure. By inspecting the HTML elements, we find the class or identifier that represents the dates with scheduled auctions. Then we extract the dates. We write code to loop through the calendar and extract only the dates that have auctions. These dates may be highlighted or have a specific HTML attribute we can target. Next, we are storing the dates into a list so we know exactly which days to click on next. This way, we have a dynamic list of all the days in November that have an auction scheduled, which in this case is going to be 17 dates. Now let's get to the heart of the script, scraping the auction data for each day that's available. The first step we're going to do is click on the first auction date, which in this case is November 1st of 2024. What we want to do is get the elements for just this first page and get this into a structured format. Here we run our code to click on that first date. Next, we're going to set up an empty list called auction data. This is where we're going to store all of our records, which will then transform into a data frame that we could then read as a CSV file. So now we're going to find all of the auction items within our driver. We are now going to parse through all of the auction items. So if there's say five auction items, we're going to parse through each one of them, which is five different times. And we want to get specific information here, like the date, auction type, case number, and a few more fields. This is what is happening in the function above. Because we're going to be repeating this action against every single property for pre-foreclosure, we want to put it into a function so we can quickly reference the same code. Once we gather the auction info in a structured format, which is in a dictionary, we are appending that to our list. This runs pretty quickly, and let's actually take a preview of just for this first date, what we receive in our response. For our pandas data frame, which is structured like a table, so rows and columns, we could see those same exact five properties that were for pre-foreclosure in our list. We have information like the date of the auction, final judgment amount, parcel ID, property dress, assess value, and even links like to the auction as well as to the property records. This is great. We now have a little bit of our data in place, but we need to do this for all of the auction dates. So we're going to simulate clicking on each auction date. Our script loops through each date in our list of auction dates. And for each date, we're going to navigate by clicking into the next day button. 
Then we're going to scrape the auction details for that specific date. Once we're on a specific page for a specific date, we want to locate the auction items. We'll parse through each auction item. So for each item, we're getting the relevant data like we saw previously for that first page, like parcel ID, case number, property address, final judgment amount, assess value, and links to auction and parcel pages. We store this information in a structured format. So as a dictionary per object, and then ultimately as a list for a collection of objects. We're also mimicking human behavior by adding different pieces of code to avoid being blocked by the website's anti-bot measures in case it has any. So for example, we're using random delays because realistically a human is not going to rapidly click next page, next page, next page. So we need to simulate a reality. Reality is probably sitting on a page for a couple of seconds and scrolling up and down on the page to look at all of the listings. So we are automating delays and scrolling. Let's run this cell and see our results. In total, this took about six and a half minutes to scrape all of the data, which is about 30 or so records for properties in waiting for auction, which is incredible. Instead of hiring someone to manually do this and spending hours on it, we've automated the process to reduce manual error as well and to have a free solution. In this table, we could see our output that now we have for all of the properties, the dates, parcel ID, property address, final judgment, assess value, and the supporting links. Finally, we can export the data frame to a CSV. This will make it easy for sharing. It can be opened in Excel, Google Sheets, or even in your CRM. Now that we have our data, are we done? No, of course, there's a lot of other steps that we should be considering. First, enriching the data. We should be getting information on the property owner through the property records and also get contact details so we can skip trace them. Property analysis. We want to assess the property condition, market value, and potential ROI. Automating the process. Ideally, we're not doing this in memory and it's not going to be ran on a daily basis through a notebook. Instead, we want to use cloud infrastructure like AWS Lambda to be able to host our script and other scheduling services like Circle CI to make sure we do this on a cadence. Then this was also for one single county. When you're scaling up to multiple counties or states, you're going to want to look at proxies to avoid IP blocking and handle CAPTCHAs that might appear. If you're looking to run similar piece of code for your own county, and you're looking to learn the fundamentals of how to gather alternative leads lists, those that find motivated sellers in creative ways, then join us for our live course running from October to November. My team and I will guide you through web scraping, skip tracing, data aggregation, automation techniques. Even if you're watching this after the live sessions, the course will be available for you to take at your own pace. You'll find the link in the description below. By leveraging web scraping and tools like ChatGPT, you can gain a competitive edge in finding high quality up-to-date leads, all without breaking the bank. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe for more content like this. Let me know in the comments if there's anything else you'd like me to cover. Thanks for watching.